Today I've got a nice integral that we're going to solve using complex analytic methods. And this comes from our favorite neighborhood integral suggester. So by complex analytic methods, I mean in particular we're going to use the residue theorem. So that says if you take an integral around some closed curve in the complex plane of a function f, you get 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of that function within that region that is bound by this closed curve. So all of this sounds like a bit technical, but actually the basis for it is not too hard to understand. Although we won't go over it in this video, we'll just do the calculation. If you would like to see a full complex analysis course, I have one on the second channel, which is called Math Major. Okay, so let's look at the integral that we're going to solve here. It's the integral from zero to pi over two of tangent of x to the ith power. So by i, I mean the square root of minus one. So let's see how we can get started with this. I'll do this with a substitution. So let's start by setting u equal to tangent x, but let's notice that means that x equals the inverse tangent of theta, so arc tangent of u, I should say. That means that dx is one over u squared plus one, just by taking the derivative of the inverse tangent function. So we'll let this guide our substitution. So that means I can rewrite this guy as the integral of, let's see, I've got u is tangent of x. So this is gonna be u to the i power over u squared plus one du, where that u squared plus one in the denominator came from the dx component. And I guess I should say this is not one over u squared plus one, it's du over u squared plus one. Now, what about the bounds of integration? Well, let's notice when x is equal to zero, u is equal to zero because tangent of zero is zero. And as x approaches pi over two from below, tangent is approaching positive infinity. So I'll put an infinity right here. Okay, but now let's notice that I can further make another substitution to this. And the substitution that I'll make now will be u equals e to the t. So let's see what that'll do for us. So u is equal to e to the t. That means that du is equal to e to the t dt. Okay. And then that means u squared plus 1 is e to the 2t plus 1. That's pretty easy. And then what about the bounds of integration? Well, notice as u is approaching infinity, that means that t is also approaching infinity. But as u approaches 0, well, notice for u to approach zero, we need t to approach minus infinity. And that's because as t approaches minus infinity, e to the t approaches zero. So that's how we make that substitution. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So that'll leave us with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e to the i times t, e to the t dt. So that comes from our u to the i and then our du. And then in the denominator, we have e to the 2t plus 1. Okay, so that's what we're working with at the moment. But now I'm going to do a little bit of simplification here. Let's take this e to the t and let it cancel some stuff out in the denominator. So it'll change this denominator from e to the 2t plus 1 to e to the t plus e to the minus t. Okay, good. And then next, I'm going to use Euler's formula to rewrite this e to the i t. So let's recall that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So that allows me to write this as the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cos t over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt plus i times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of sine of t over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt. Okay, so that looks good. But let's notice that sine is an odd function and the denominator here is an even function. But since sine is odd and the denominator is even, this entire function is odd. But that entire function being odd, being integrated over a symmetric domain, means that we get zero there. So this entire thing goes to zero. Okay, good. 
So we're left with this integral from minus infinity to infinity of cos t over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt. And actually, let's bring that up over here, and then we'll work with complex analysis from here on out. So in the last board, we determined that our goal integral was equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cosine t over e to the t plus e to the minus t. And now we're going to transform this into an integral in the complex plane. And the idea here is that we can calculate that entire integral in the complex plane easily using the residue theorem. But then portions of this curve are very easy to calculate, whereas other portions are difficult to calculate. In particular, the portion of the curve determined by this integral will be difficult to calculate, whereas the others will be simple. But then putting all of that together, we can maybe form an equation for our goal integral. Okay, so that being said, let's maybe jump into our contour or our closed curve that we need to integrate over. Okay, so let's consider, like I said, the closed curve, usually called a contour, that is the following rectangle. So this is going to be my complex plane right here. And then my real part will go from minus capital R to plus capital R. And then eventually we'll take R to infinity. And then I'm going to go straight up, ending at maybe a height of i times pi, or a height of pi, I guess I should say. So this point right here is i times pi, which means this point right here is like r plus i times pi. And then this part over here is minus r plus i times pi. So that's my rectangular region right there. Okay, so now let's maybe complete that contour and then just positively orient it, which means if we're walking along the boundary, the region should be on the left. Okay, so let's maybe point a couple of things out here. First of all, this region right here, which maybe I'll kind of double shade in this other color, this represents our integral. So what I mean by our in this our integral statement is this guy right here. It's not quite yet our integral, but after letting r tend to infinity, that will be our integral. Okay, so let's maybe name this entire thing C, and now we'll calculate the integral over this curve C of cos z over e to the z plus e to the minus z dz. And so we'll make this calculation first with the residue theorem, and then we'll calculate each of these remaining parts kind of by hand, putting it all together so we get an equation for our goal. So in order to use the residue theorem, we need to find the places that this function is non-analytic. In other words, it has something like a discontinuity in the region bound by this curve. But let's maybe note that that will occur when this denominator is equal to zero. That's because cosine of t is something called, or cosine of z maybe I should say, is something called an entire function. So it's analytic over the whole complex plane. Okay, so let's notice that e to the z plus e to the minus z is equal to zero when z is equal to i times pi over two. It's actually equal to zero like a bunch of other places because e to the z and e to the minus z are, is a two pi periodic function, but this is the only one that's within this region. And just to put it into perspective, it's occurring right here. Okay. So using this residue theorem, we only need to calculate the residue at that point, and that will be the value of this integral. So this is going to be 2 pi i, and then the residue at z equals pi over 2 times i of our function. So that will be cosine of z over e to the z plus e to the minus z. Okay, nice. But now we're going to use like a little trick for calculating these residues. So if we plug pi over 2 times i into the numerator, it is not 0. But if we plug into the denominator, it is 0. But there's a trick that allows us to take the derivative of the denominator and then plug in pi over 2 times i, and that will give us the residue. 
So this is kind of, but not quite like L'Hopital's rule for finding limits. Okay, so let's do that. That will give us two pi i, and then we'll have cosine of pi over two times i. Then we need to take the derivative of this and plug pi over two times i in. So what will that be? That'll be e to the pi over two times i for this first one, and then minus e to the minus pi over two times i for this second one. Okay. But what's e to the pi over two times i? Well, that's on the unit circle at a argument of pi over two. So this is just the number i. And then furthermore, that other one is on the unit circle with an argument of minus pi. So that is minus i. So putting that all together, we see that our denominator is equal to two times i, which is nice because that cancels out this two times i in the numerator leaving us with pi times the cosine of pi over two times i. And we'll in fact calculate that using the exponential version of the cosine function. So this will give us pi over two times, so e to the i times pi over two i, so that's e to the minus pi over two, plus e to the minus i times pi over two i, but that's gonna be e to the pi over two. So we're left with something like that. Okay, so now let's bring this value maybe up here to the left of this, and then we will recalculate this integral with each of these portions of the boundary curve. So where did we end up? We ended up showing that this integral over this closed curve was equal to pi over two times e to the pi over two plus e to the minus pi over two. And now we're ready to calculate this piece by piece with each of these line, segment, which, line segments, which are the boundary curves. So maybe we'll start with the top and the bottom and then do the right and the left. So notice that the bottom is just equal to the integral from minus r to r of the cosine of t over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt. But that should be expected because if we let r go to infinity, we get the integral over the entire real line, which is our goal integral up here. Okay, so now let's see what we have for what's going over the top of this box. So that'll be plus the integral from r to minus r, because remember that our orientation but in the top of this box, z is equal to a real number, any real number, plus i times pi. So we can rewrite that as the cosine of t plus i times pi. And then down here, we'll have e to the t times e to the i times pi, because we've got e to the t plus i times pi, just to maybe write that out carefully. In the denominator, we have e to the t plus i times pi, but that's e to the t times e to the i times pi. But then e to the i times pi is minus one. So this turns into minus e to the t, and then it's gonna be another minus e to the minus t for similar reasons. Okay, great. But now I'm gonna take this minus sign and maybe pull it out and change the order of the bounds of integration. So it looks kind of more similar to what we have over here. Okay, so there we've got the top and the bottom. Now what I'll do is write the right and the left. So maybe starting with the right. So that'll be the integral from zero to pi. But now notice that this portion of the curve can be parameterized by z equals r plus i times y, where y goes from zero to pi. That's why we're doing this integral from zero to pi. Okay, so now plugging that in for z, we'll get the cosine of r plus i times y in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we'll have just e to the r plus i times y, and then e to the minus r times i times y. So that'll give us e to the r times e to the i y plus e to the minus r times e to the minus i y. And then this will be dy. Okay, so that's what's happening over here. And then over on this other side, we'll have the integral from Let's see, we need to parameterize this from pi to zero because of our orientation. And then our parameterization is almost the same as it is over here, 
but now we have z equals minus r plus i times y. y is still going from zero to pi. But actually maybe it's going from pi to zero because of our reversal of this parameterization. Okay, so let's write that out. That'll give me cosine of minus r plus i times y. And then in the denominator, I'll have essentially the same thing, but now with this replaced. So let's see, this will be e to the minus r, e to the i, y, and then plus e to the r, e to the minus i, y, dy. Okay, so we're left with something like that. But now it kind of makes sense to combine these two, and I'm not going to work out all of the details right here, but if you combine these two, maybe splitting up this cosine r plus i y and cosine of minus r plus i y using a sum angle formula for cosine, what you'll see is that these are exactly equal and opposite of each other, so that means they cancel each other. So this guy cancels with that guy. So that means they net you just zero, which means all we need to do is worry about this one up here. But now this one up here is nicely set up to use some trigonometric identities to combine these together. So I'll maybe write this as the integral from minus r to r of cosine of t plus the cosine of t plus i pi all over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt. Okay, so now let's maybe bring that up here and then we'll finish it off. So we're almost done. We left ourselves off with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cosine plus cosine of t plus i pi over this sum of exponential functions equals pi over two times e to the pi over two plus e to the minus pi over two. Great. And now we're going to use a sum angle formula to simplify this a little bit. So in fact, what we'll get here is the cosine of t times the cosine of i times pi, and then minus the sine of t times the sine of i times pi. Okay, good. But then if we were to integrate that sine integral, we would notice that we have a setup that's pretty similar to what we had before, where we had an odd function. And so this does not contribute at all to the integral. Obviously it's not identically zero, but it doesn't contribute to the integral because it's an odd function from minus infinity to infinity. Oh, by the way, from the last board to this board, I took the limit as r goes to infinity. Okay, so that leaves us with something like this. But notice we have a common term here, this cosine of t. So that means we can factor that out, leaving us with one plus cosine of i times pi. Okay, great. So let's see, that leaves us with one plus cosine of i times pi, like I said, and then the integral from minus infinity to infinity of cosine of t over e to the t plus e to the minus t dt which is good because this right here is exactly our goal integral. So that means if we can calculate this number, we're basically done. But this number is not too tricky to calculate, and that's because we can use the complex exponential version of cosine. So that'll leave us with something like this. We'll, we will have one half and then e to the i times i times pi. So that's gonna be e to the minus pi plus e to the minus i times i times pi. So that's gonna be e to the pi. So we have one plus that. But that gives us an algebraic equation that we can use to solve for our goal integral, which I boxed over there in blue, but is up here as well. And now I'll let you guys finish off the last couple of steps, but solving for our goal integral gives us pi over e to the pi over two plus e to the minus pi over two. And that's a good place to stop.